Let's take a step away from politics for a few minutes and focus on an issue that many Portlanders are blissfully unaware of. There's an environmental disaster just waiting to happen on the banks of the Willamette River. Just saying that gives me chills. It has to do with the massive tanks that are there and what lies within them and under them. The initial threat of the potential for catastrophe was first identified 10 years ago, but now state regulators are finally taking action. Environmental reporter Cale Williams has the story. Northwest Portland is home to some of the city's most beautiful and iconic scenery. Forest Park, the St. John's Bridge, Savi Island. It's also home to the largest group of fuel storage facilities in the state, collectively known as the Critical Energy Infrastructure Hub. But there's a problem lurking underneath the 600 tanks lining a six-mile stretch of the Willamette River, the soil itself. Because the hub was built on Sandy River fill, it's prone to a phenomenon known as liquefaction during an earthquake. Oregon State Marine Geologist Chris Goldfinger explains. Everybody actually knows what liquefaction is, because anytime you go to the beach and kind of wiggle your toes in the sand a little bit, and suddenly your feet sink a little bit, and then the holes fill up with water, that's basically liquefaction. When the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake hits, and it is a matter of when, not if, many of the tanks in northwest Portland are likely to fail. On a bigger scale, if you build a structure on, on that and the ground, it does the same thing. So all the grains scrunch closer together and the water comes out and the, and the ground will settle, uh, you know, from a few inches to, to maybe, maybe a few feet. Goldfinger says we saw the impact of liquefaction during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake in San Francisco. Part of the city's marina district was built on fill, similar to the tanks in northwest Portland. That area saw widespread destruction during a quake that was smaller and shorter than what we expect from the Cascadia subduction zone. I think the outcome for the energy hub would be roughly similar to, uh, say, this marina district in San Francisco or other cases for liquefaction, uh, but, but potentially worse because the, the, the duration of the earthquake is likely to be longer, and, and duration um, really enhances liquefaction quite a bit. And that spells trouble, not just for Portland, but for all of Oregon. The Critical Energy Infrastructure Hub, also known as the Tank Farm, holds 90% of the liquid fuel used in the state, holds all of the fuel used at the Portland International Airport, and it doesn't usually hold more than a week's worth of jet fuel, gas, and diesel. And fuel will be a crucial component to rescue and recovery efforts in the aftermath of a large quake. That's according to Jay Wilson, the Resilience Coordinator for Clackamas County Emergency Management. The fuel shortage that's going to occur will be felt immediately. I think there's three to five or about a week's worth of energy or fuel that's been kept there at the critical energy hub. A massive failure at the tank farm could also produce an environmental catastrophe that would rank among the worst in U.S. history. One of these mega quakes, the last one occurred in the year 1700, uh, uh, can produce minutes and minutes of sustained shaking that can liquefy the soils, destabilize the facilities, and lead to failure of the tank systems and the release of millions and millions, of, hundreds of millions of gallons of oil. Experts have estimated the potential spill to be between 100 and 200 million gallons, with as much as 82 million gallons spilling directly into the Willamette. It's been said that the spill would exceed that of the recent Deepwater Horizon event in the Gulf of Mexico. For Travis Williams, executive director of Willamette Riverkeeper, the scale of the destruction is hard to imagine. The, the sediments in the nearshore areas in most river systems, which are uh, really the most uh, biologically productive, um, those areas would be completely coated in oil and other related materials. And you could say that for birds, mammals, fish that are in here, freshwater mussels, anything that is living or relying on this aquatic environment would be heavily impacted. The threat posed by a failure at the Critical Energy Infrastructure Hub is not new. The first report on the danger there was written in 2012 and released the following year. The most recent report was released earlier this year, with several other reports in between. Each of those reports had similar recommendations make the companies who operate the tank farm assess their facilities for earthquake risk and require them to submit plans to the state for how they'll minimize the damage when an earthquake hits. Now, thanks to legislation passed earlier this year, the state is doing just that. Senate Bill 1567 directs the DEQ and facilities to conduct assessments of their facilities in the event of a magnitude nine earthquake. 
and to prepare mitigation plans. It is um, a, a risk waiting to happen. The time to deal with it is before the earthquake, not after. State Senator Michael Dembro, who represents a district in Northeast Portland and was chief sponsor of the bill, explained why lawmakers were unable to act earlier. I think there was just resistance from industry and resistance from people who felt that this is something that the tank owners should be responsible for themselves. But once he learned the scale of the potential disaster, Dembro said he felt he had to act. How do those of us who are legislators or just how do any of us live with ourselves if we haven't taken steps to uh, to ward off the worst of you know what could happen? We asked the companies located in the tank farm if they had done the assessments recommended in reports dating back nearly a decade. And if they had, if they'd send us a copy. Most of them didn't respond, but a few of them did. Spokeswoman from Kinder Morgan did not provide a seismic assessment, but she said the company regularly runs through safety drills, and while its older tanks have not had any retrofits, its four newest tanks were built to modern seismic safety standards. A spokesman for New Star Energy gave a blanket statement on the company's safety and environmental record and said they would be submitting an assessment to the state when it was required. The only company that actually sent us any documents was Zenith Energy. They passed along a seismic assessment of four of the company's tanks, which the company said were most vulnerable to earthquakes. Their assessment, performed by a local engineering firm, found the tanks were likely to perform well when an earthquake hit. But trusting the companies to be their own regulators is not something Travis Williams is ready to concede. I think there has to be a level of transparency in all of this. You know, they, they have the luck of being on the Willamette River, of having this infrastructure historically in a place because it's easy to transport bulk goods like petroleum products. Um, but they also bear the brunt of protecting the river for the public because it's the public's river. Kale joins me now, and holy cow, if this thing happens, I guess we're going to have multiple disasters going on. That's right. I mean, you have the potential for a tsunami out of the coast. We've got a number of unreinforced masonry buildings in Portland that are at risk of collapse. We've got bridges that weren't built to modern seismic safety standards that could also come down. So it's, it's going to be a mess. Yeah. I Let's hope it does not happen in our lifetimes, but we have to plan as if it will. And you're saying also there won't be any gasoline for our cars. Yeah, I mean, if the tank farm goes down, like you heard in the piece, there's about six days worth of fuel in there. And a lot of that fuel is gonna be needed for rescue and recovery efforts. So according to statements from the government, we may not see fuel deliveries in most community areas for up to three weeks after an earthquake. That will be brutal. And then if there's outside help that's trying to come in, that's going to be a problem as well, right? It's true. Oregon's fuel action plan, the document that they came up with in case of an earthquake, calls for fuel to come in from the military or the federal government. But that would have to be flown in. And one of the runways at PDX is also built on river fill, which could potentially suffer from liquefaction in it's an earthquake. It's that same thing. Oh my gosh, that's brutal. Is there any way to keep these huge fuel tanks from collapsing? You know, that remains to be seen, and that's kind of the point of this, all this legislation. We haven't had an earthquake like this in 300 years, so we don't know. But this legislation will force these companies to study their tanks and figure out whether they'll stay up in an earthquake and what they can do to help them do so. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're on top of it. Thanks for checking this out and letting us know the latest. We'll look forward to what comes next. My pleasure.